So, I know that you, yes you, want to save some money on your turbo build and the turbocharger being one of the, if not the most expensive part of that, um, well, there is a lot of potential to save money there by buying um, non-name brand turbochargers such as Max Speeding Rods or Pulsar and what to look out for or rather what my experiences were in buying different quality of turbochargers or different quality levels so you know what to choose for your next build. At the entry level which I have not represented here would be the max speeding rods turbocharger or generally pretty much the 100 to 200 bucks Chinese turbo, which is obviously the lowest you can go. There are different manufacturers or rather different brands that offer these turbos, although I would recommend going with one that at least kind of has a name in behind them, because Max Speeding Rods is at least giving you some support, whereas some different manufacturers you get from eBay or AliExpress or whatever tend to not give any support at all on these cheap units and yeah I would recommend going for them because the price difference isn't really that large so you could pay like 10 to 15 bucks more and uh, at least get some kind of warranty or return policy that you can use. But what are these turbos exactly? I have used plenty of them before. I have one currently in my MX-5 which is a GT3582. And I have used a KO3 in my 1AT build. I have used a, another KO3 on my Passat. I have used a TDR4 turbo in a MX-5 build, which worked fine. And I have used a GT28 in another 1AT. So I have a lot of experience with those turbos and I have made a few videos about them having mixed experiences. While a lot of them tend to perform really well and work for quite a long period of time, even at higher boost levels, which I have had um, heard from multiple people in various groups on Facebook, for example, especially in 1AT groups, where the turbochargers are quite small and still run under relatively high boost pressures up to like 1.5 bar, I have heard that these turbos even last pretty well. I have had that same experience with my Passat. I ran that KO3 turbo at about 1.1 bar and which is like 16 PSI for I think like 15,000 miles and it was fine. And I really hammered that turbo because I didn't know the EGTs were very high, probably around 900 to 950 degrees, which is quite high for that cheap of a turbo. So. You could say that was pretty durable, but I had some bad things to say as well because I used one for a 1AT, a stock KO3 or KO4 upgrade turbo, which didn't last long at all, like 700 kilometers. Um, so that's the other side of things. And also the GT28 I used for my 1AT for a different one that also had substantial oiling issues after like 2000 kilometers. But on the other side again, I have used the TDO4 turbo at 0.8 bar on the MX-5 even without a blow-off valve and never had issues with it. So on that side they are pretty good and they work pretty well. And that turbo even accidentally ran like half an hour without any oil on it. So take that for what you want. I kind of recommend these turbos because for the price actually they last quite well you have to monitor the wear i'd say because if they get excessive play and the compressor wheel is rubbing on the housing and you get metal shavings everywhere you obviously do not want that so monitor the condition of the turbocharger but as long as you do that and it doesn't have excessive play a little bit don't worry is actually fine on these turbos i've experienced that in quite a few scenarios that even a little axial play that's not a huge issue on them. Uh, it looks like they need to run in and get some play and then they work fine. So uh, although it sounds kind of weird, it seems that it just is that way on those units because every one of those units has a little play at least in axial motions or back and forth, which normally you actually don't want. 
and which is something where you would immediately repair or replace the turbo. The only thing I would suggest with those is running a lower boost level because I think because they only have a 270 degrees thrust bearing, so the bearing that provides the support for the shaft to for the inner and outer movement is only 270 degrees of the whole rotation, so it does not, not support all of the shaft and therefore is a bit weaker, especially if you, for example, run higher boost levels. And for example, in addition, you do not run a blow off valve. So that's kind of the critical point with those turbos and maybe the materials used in those bearings aren't really the best. As for balancing goes, they are actually pretty well balanced. You have to say that because and there is a guy on YouTube that actually put one of those on a VSR balancing machine and it was very well within tolerance, even better than some OEM Garrett parts. So I don't see any issues there. The only problem is that if you do not run a blow-off valve on higher boost levels, that the compressor wheel can shift on the shaft and then the turbo itself is out of balance. And then therefore, obviously, because of the vibrations that probably start to happen, it can wear out the bearings quite fast. So that's for the really, really cheap units. Then there are some cheap units that have been upgraded. So you can see a lot of them, a lot of uh, cheap uh, Chinese units that have been upgraded with, for example, like this one, with a billet compressor wheel, which first of all makes the turbo spool a bit better and makes the compressor a bit more efficient as it can be machined thinner and therefore having more surface area and at the same size um, being able to compress or being able to flow more air while being lighter at the same time. And these turbochargers most of the time also have a 360 degree thrust bearing, which is a lot better than the stock 270 degrees uh, for as for boost pressure goes for support and generally longevity is much much higher so i would highly recommend using those because they are only like sometimes only like 50 to 100 bucks more but you can get a lot more lifetime out of these but don't confuse them for example with the max speeding rods unit that are sport performance because those still have a 270 degree thrust bearing and they although having a billet compressor wheel they are using the same contours as with the cast compressor wheels so they actually do not offer any benefit over a cast compressor wheel they just just use different materials in the compressor wheel as well as the exhaust housing and the turbine wheel so that they are a bit more heat resistant but if that really makes a huge difference i actually doubt it so i would get these ones if you for example have a bit more budget and this would be my choice for a budget turbo build actually which leads me exactly to this one which is also kind of a unit similar to this although with a ball bearing there are different ball bearing turbos from china or different well also different manufacturers there are kind of these no-name brands like this one for example and then there's name brands such as this pulsar unit on these no name brands you might get lucky you might get unlucky because there are some that are really really good and durable and whatever and don't see any failures and then there are some actually that tend to fail over time quite often on this one this was ran actually 40,000 miles on a 180 engine at uh, 1.45 bar so uh, at pretty high boost levels on a stock engine though but it was mostly daily driven at almost no boost pressure so it just ran in the car for like 40,000 miles which is pretty good and it does not have any shaft play and so this is something that really impressed me because it was really cheap and yeah you can get lucky and but you also can get unlucky with those units. I think Boosted Boys on YouTube also use these kinds of units. So uh, use the cheaper ball bearing units in their cars and they have had pretty good luck with them, even pushing them to like 30 to 40 PSI without any problems. And I do recommend that 
Although I must say you do not really always need a ball bearing turbo. It is application specific and it will only benefit you in some applications and it's not really a must to go for a ball bearing unit if you don't necessarily have the budget or maybe spend the budget somewhere else for example in the manifold department to get some more durability over there or whatever but it can be a nice to have especially if you are looking for more transient response for example after shifting coming to the last unit i want to look at which is a pulsar unit and it's the as this this is a gta 2871 this is a gt 2860 so they have the same turbine wheel but they have a different compressor so this is 60 millimeters extrusor and this is a 71 millimeters extrusor so this can deliver about in theory 100 horsepower more and also the compressor geometry is a bit different as this has a 7 plus 7 design a blade design and this has an 11 plus 0 blade design but in general you can compare these relatively well this one is a product that is as i said from pulsar turbo which i wholeheartedly recommend they are a great company any turbos from them are much better than any of the ones you can see right here on the right side of me because they have a much better quality control standard so you actually know kind of better what you are getting actually you have a better support and you kind of have a company name standing behind that because pulsar turbo also has distributors all over europe all over the us and therefore you already know that the turbochargers actually last. They are used by quite a few people having high horsepower cars, um, even in Germany, like on VR6 turbos that make like 12, 1300 horsepower or more. And these turbos work very well and they are not having any issues. If they break or whatever it is, probably like on the Garrett side, kind of a fluke. And I've had a few friends that actually had those and they do compare pretty well as far as power potential and response goes compared to, for example, Garrett units. The only thing you have to keep in mind is that they maybe aren't using the newest materials, especially for the turbine wheel, as they are no using normal Inconel turbo turbine wheels, whereas, for example, the G25 series from Garrett are using some newer material that is actually lighter in the same aerodynamics so the turbos might spool a bit better but there is not a huge difference in them so you might get like a 300 or 200 rpm better spool but you also pay three to maybe four times the price on a garrett unit so maybe that's worth it to you but i think you could stay at the end of pulsar and go for one that's actually like 500 to a thousand bucks instead of going for one that's 750 to 4000 bucks obviously there are some name brand options that are quite good as well if you want to save some money for example on the garrett side there is the gbc series which works quite well especially on the smaller side of turbos the gbc 17 to 50 for example for really small engines has a awesome response and is also better than for example a tdo 413t and it is an amazing turbo for anyone that wants a really early response and still wants like 230 horsepower at the top end and that range goes up to the gbc 20 350 which is also pretty good and replaces the gt 2560r for example from garrett and costs only like seven to eight hundred euros so that's pretty amazing and a pretty good value actually for a name brand turbo the gbc line offers also a bigger variant or two bigger variants at the higher end for example the gbc 35 and 37 series which are up to almost a thousand horsepower and they are price wise very similar so Instead of going for a Pulsar, you also could get a Garrett GBC Turbo. Although they do not have a ball bearing cartridge, so they are just journal bearing, 
they are obviously genuine Garrett. So you get the Garrett support, you get the Garrett longevity, you get the Garrett warranty and so on. Again, as I said with the other one, you don't necessarily need ball bearings. From Borg Warner, there is also an option or there are also a few options being the Borg Warner SXE series, which cover from the lower end, the SX200 up to the SX400 units. And they can also be had by, from Pulsar, so they are a bit cheaper and also offer ball bearings. But the price difference between the Pulsar units and the Borg Warner units isn't that massive, so you might even be better off buying a Borg Warner unit, although you gotta choose if that makes sense for you because especially on the uh, pulsar side the turbine option or turbine housing options aren't that many so yeah maybe keep that in mind when choosing a sxe borg warner turbo that's basically everything about the cheaper turbochargers that you can get on the market right now I would love to hear your opinions on those. Have you ever had any experience with any of the turbos we had here? And uh, if you had any bad experiences, also let us know. Um, we like to hear those and maybe give some advice later on to other people that watch this video. Otherwise, I wish you a nice day and goodbye.